Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast of your favorite somewhat tanking team in the Bay Area. And on today's episode, we have another draft profile. Uh, this time we talk about the defenseman uh, Lucas Drag Isovich, uh, where we kind of preview him, talk about his strengths, his weaknesses, and where he would fit in the Sharks prospect system and why he should be a very, very tantalizing prospect for Sharks fans. So all that and more on today's episode of Locked on Sharks. Your Locked on Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, J.D. Young, contributor to San Jose Hockey Now. I want to thank you guys for making Locked On Sharks your first listen. Uh, you can subscribe or follow for free wherever you get podcasts and, of course, on YouTube as well. That way you know when the latest episode uh, drops. YouTube gets them first, guys. Um, part of the Locked On Network where we cover your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you guys by Game Time. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. So I have Keegan, uh, aka Half Wall Hockey, also of San Jose Hockey. Now he joins to talk about uh, one of his favorite defensive prospects in the entire draft. And um, I this this guy might be a, a realistic option for the sharks at 20 i'm just gonna say 28 for the devil's pick um i think the sharks will be really really intriguing um to, to pick him and where he would kind of fit in the sharks prospect pool uh then we talk about kind of how mike greer has really kind of revamped this prospect pool in a really short uh, amount of time at the end of the episode so uh enjoy and now we bring in keegan a.k.a. Half Wall Hockey, to talk about uh, Lucas Dragosevic. How's it going, buddy? Good. How are you? Hanging Happy to be here. In. Yeah. Uh, hanging in there. Uh, I know you were very excited about Reached out to me. Like, this is the guy you want to talk about. <laughs> um, so I think we both kind of agree the Sharks are going to probably be picking a defenseman either with that devil's pick or with their first pick in the second round. Yep. Um Let's get to know Lucas Dragosevic. So, defenseman uh, for the Tri-City Americans. Uh, you can't get any more American than that name, I think. The Tri-City <laughs> Americans in the WHL. Uh, April 20, 2005, baby. So, he hasn't even turned 17 yet. Six foot two, 181 pounds. Uh, it's had a very, very nice season for the Tri-City Americans. 68 games, 15 goals, uh, 60 assists, 211 shots on goal, um, okay. which is an insane amount. Again, Zach Benson, I tweeted this out earlier when I was kind of researching. Zach Benson has less shots on goal, and he plays forward. Um, <laughs> and he's going to be the, probably the fourth or fifth pick in the draft. Um, so what makes – we'll start here. What makes – um, Dragon Seven, it's such an interesting prospect in your mind. I love it. Uh, I think you hyped up the reaching out and, and wanting to pick him so much that now I feel like if he busts, it's going to be all my fault. <laughs> um, I, fault. I think there's a reason why <laughs> there's a reason why I wanted to talk about him so much. Is just he's a really interesting player, and he's he's got amazing production, like you can you can tell there. Um, but the thing that sticks out the most is his passing game. It's his Transition, it's his, actual, his amazing ability to hit a man in stride, get the play going immediately. Like, he he doesn't make a bad pass. And I, that seems like over-exaggerating, but he is, and I, I looked at some data from Mitch Brown through his Patreon, like uh, tracking data for WHL and such. He's one of the best transition defenders in the WHL, and actually in all the junior leagues. Um, mm. He just doesn't make a bad pass. He's he's really good at holding onto the puck, waiting for someone to get open, and then just launching him the puck. And that's he's a little bit better getting a breakout started than he is in zone. Great in zone passing. Mm -hmm. um, he 
despite having insane production, isn't like cheating for his offense or just dangling through three people and then lobbing it on net and then goes in or whatever, or just getting cheap points. He's just really good at playing hockey <laughs> in, <laughs> in, in the offensive direction. And I think that's kind of the hallmark of his game is his offensive play. So, I mean, we know the WHL, it's got some powerhouse teams um, and it's not like he's, he's playing with some schlubs. He's got a really good goaltender um, on his team, oh, yeah. you know, uh, like, is it, cause like, that's kind of the, always the worry too, right. With, with some of these WHL guys, it's like, yeah, you're getting boosted up with your offensive numbers because you play on a stack team. Like if you look at like the Seattle Thunderbirds, which have like a bajillion guys who are going to be in the NHL because they kind of built their team that way and they traded for, yep. for a bunch of guys. Um, how much is it him kind of driving play for his production and how much is it, or like you said, he's a great passer or is it, he's kind of benefiting because of the guys he's playing with. I don't think it's really benefiting from the guys he's playing with. I think tri city is like a borderline playoff team or so. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they're just about to make, um, but really most of the like offense goes through them and goes through hits. It's really him leading the breakout and, and making sure that they get into the zone effectively. Um, I don't think it's really a product of just being on a great team. He's also leading the team in, in points as a 17-year-old defenseman. <laughs> Impressive by like 15 points or something like that. He's really good at just making sure that they get the puck into the offense. And if that's what you're looking for in a defender, and if that's something that your your prospect pool might be missing, um, and that might be somebody to go after. And I'm hinting at maybe one specific team that could be missing that in their prospect. Uh, yes, uh, a one specific team that we both adore very much mm-hmm. uh, could definitely, I think, use another puck moving defenseman uh, in their prospect pool. So, and his size, six foot two, I mean, 180 pounds. Again, he's also 17. So you expect him to kind of bulk that up. Um, it pro- feels like he's kind of a bit of a proto, kind of a bigger. I guess the puck moving defenseman, usually you yeah. know, puck moving defensemen are a little bit small. So what is it? Do you think that's kind of holding him back from being talked about as a mid first round or one of the, the best kind of drafts instead of or best defenseman in the draft, instead of being considered a late round pick compared, you know, or early second round pick. Yeah. I think that's, it's interesting because you're right. He's six foot two. He's not a small, it's not a small dude. He's not particularly slow. So he's not, Mm-hmm. horrible skater i wouldn't say it's a strength it's kind of like he's average to maybe a slightly below average skater um in terms of his acceleration uh, he has decent four-way mobility but his, his acceleration is a little bit poor um and he also just doesn't use his feet very often so he doesn't like he, he prefers to just wait and hold on to the puck until he's going to pass it out he doesn't like it most times he's at least trying to break out the puck um so that little bit of it is the skating. And I think the bigger issue is this defensive play is just not great. And that's kind of like the, um, the, um, uh, the, like the hidden secret about it. It's just, it's not very good. It's not like, we'll get to, I think comps in, in a little bit, but um, it's not like Merkley level of bad where Merkley just didn't get it. Like Merkley just did not, not understand how to defend a two on one, how to defend mm-hmm. the rush, how to get people to the outside, how to do any of that stuff. It's just, Dragosevic, I think it's Dragosevic. I've heard both Dragosevic and Dragosevic, but um, he just is very passive. So he will let people get around, just kind of like wait and wait for the puck to come back to him at some point during the play. He'll let them cycle and just kind of get into a good position. He's very mm-hmm. interested in positional defending, I'd call it. Like just okay. trying to get you of, you know, breaking up a pass or whatever, or just being in front of the net, but he's not aggressive at, at cutting off uh, attackers. He's not aggressive at putting them to the outside at all. And and that's probably a little bit worrisome to teams, just how passive he is comparatively to a bunch of his other peers. Um, but I think I listened to uh, the Elite Prospects ranking recently, and, and one, of the, one of the guys there had said that he only started playing Defender like three years ago. So he's not like a defender since 12 years old or whatever yeah. and still play defense forever it's just he's always been one of the best players on his team wherever he's been and then now he's transitioned into this defender role because they realize that he can break a puck out really really well so i think there's a lot more to do with him on the defensive side of the puck that might be mm-hmm. putting teams off 
combined with maybe some like below average to average skating. All right, guys, before we continue uh, talking about Lucas, Lucas Dragovic, Dragicevic, uh, do have to take a quick break. Uh, talk to you guys about our new friends over at Game Time. Um, nothing worse than trying to buy tickets for things, especially if you're trying to find the last minutes. You're comparing on a bunch of different websites, trying to see who has the like the different fees, all that stuff. Um, buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Um, Game Time, they make it super easy, right? Easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Uh, flash deals on last minute tickets, uh, images of the seat view, so you know exactly what it's got to look like where you sit. Um, Game time is the place for last minute ticket deals. Uh, forget about planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right now, up to the day of the event. They get exclusive flash deals on for basketball. Maybe you want to go catch a Warriors playoff game. Uh, baseball, the Giants and A's seasons just started. Uh, concerts, comedy, theater, all that and more. Get images of your seat, like I said before, before you buy that we know exactly where they're going to set. Buy tickets in a matter of seconds, two taps, and you're all set. So, Snag the tickets without stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, uh, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I mean, the skating is a little worrisome, but that might be, you know, we, we've seen guys improve their skating. If you can become just, you know, an average mm -hmm. skater and then, you know, if you're a positional player, I think kind of thinking the game defensively, right. That's, you know, and if you can kind of, if you can outthink the guy you are that you're playing against and that can, I think, help make up for the lack of just speed. Um, and again, we've seen guys improve their, their skating uh, throughout the years and working with a skating coach, all that fun stuff too. So um, yeah, the passive thing is, is something to be interested about too, especially with a guy. And like you said, he's only played defense for the past couple of years. Maybe that could be coaching, could be their system where they're just like, Hey, your focus is to drive our offense, um, you know, and yeah. playing, you know, that could, I think that sounds like something that could just be coached up. Like, Hey, you need to be more aggressive here. You, Hey, you need to be more aggressive here. So type of situation. And it sounds like uh, we'll get into kind of timeline and everything like that. It sounds like if he gets through all this stuff, like, this might be a steel type of player that we're looking back a couple of years from now going, how did he last to pick 28, 29, 30 type of player? Right. Yeah. I have the, I have one of the perfect comps for this. Well, well, first I want to, I want to talk about it. Also slight weaknesses. He's not very good at re retrieving the puck or getting the puck to his stick. Like mm -hmm. in the junior leagues, like the puck will just kind of like bounce around and eventually you'll find it on your stick if you're good <laughs> enough, but he's not great at like getting it back from players. And that's okay. one of the hallmarks of a defender is their ability to get it off of the attackers and then do something with it. If he can develop that skill a little bit more, especially with his size and get some more strength on his frame, I think then there's a really good defender there. It's just he has to be able to get the puck because he's not going to be able to in the next leagues. Like it's not just going to come to him like it does now. So he's got to improve his retrieval skills as well as his defending to be able to be what I think it could be. All right. So... Let's talk about his comp. What when you're watching him, who does he remind you the most? Yeah, and this is going to sound kind of dumb because he's like an all-star defenseman. Carlson, I think, is my my favorite comp for Lucas Dragsevic. He's John Carlson when he was coming up. I used I used to watch a lot of Washington when uh, mm -hmm. 15 years ago. Um, he um, <laughs> basically he wasn't a great defender either he was he's big he's like six yeah. three or something like that He was an amazing passer great offensive mind great shot from the point that's all john carlson but he wasn't a very good defender in the beginning he was a little passive he uh consistently lost his man he was just not that amazing at it and then you know he was 20 years old at the time hi emily it's my cat <laughs> <laughs> um but he got better and he needed a time to time behind time behind someone like Mike Green at the time to really develop. There's a name I haven't heard in a while. Yes. <laughs> Mike Green. 
Yes. Team. Yeah, he needed to learn how to play offense in the NHL and how to defend in the NHL. Not that Mike Green was amazing at it. He was fine, but <laughs> it's, it's like he took time. And yeah. I think with time, that's somebody that Lucas Dragosevic could turn into if it goes according to plan. If the defense comes around, if he learns how to throw his weight around a little bit, get the puck back. Um, if he improves his one timer, I think it's a little bit questionable for right now. It's something that comes with time too. Um, but he has a great wrist shot from the point already. Um, so there's a defender there that could turn into John Carlson, but it's going to be a little while. There's, there's other paths that could be taken if he, if he doesn't develop. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's the best case scenario, right? Type of thing. If everything kind of works out for him. And I mean, you've listened to me and if people listen to me, um, Defense is for nerds. Uh, <laughs> go do fun. The best way to play defense is by keeping the puck out of your own zone. And if mm-hmm. you can be an offensive juggernaut or you can drive offense yeah. um, and you can transition the puck out of your zone and keep it away from your zone, mm-hmm. like uh, that's my way of playing somebody defense like, is play keep away. So somebody like um, <laughs> Josh Percy in, in Winnipeg is, is, is um, this is like he's really, really good at breaking the puck out, good off. Of mine, he's got something like 70 points this year. He's really having a breakout year. But mm-hmm. the best part about his game is getting the puck. Like he's just really good at getting the puck off of attackers. And that's the skill that a lot of defenders don't have that need yeah. to develop to be able to use their offensive talents. Um, but I think there's a frame there for Dragosevic with six foot two, decent but not amazing feet to be able to get there. All right, so what type of timeline do you think? I mean, 17, so he's probably got a couple years left in juniors right now. Um, Mm -hmm. And then probably a couple years in the AHL, especially if he needs to learn how to be an actual defender. So probably looking three to four years before he's kind of making an impact in the NHL. Yeah, I think it's it's a really realistic timeline. And that's the same reason why the comp of John Carlson is why I chose it, is he fell to like 27 or 28th in the draft. And then five years later, everyone gosh i chose x y and z defender over him why did we do that mm. uh he clearly had these amazing talents and and it took time it took like another season i think he went back to, to juniors and then he went to the ahl and then he was in the nhl so i think his time frame was three years i'd give dragon seven four years probably as a uh, two more years in the in juniors year in the ahl and then nhl after if everything goes according to plan and he's able to improve a couple aspects of his game but I just want to emphasize that like whenever I watch him play and I watch Mm -hmm. where I think the puck is going to go, it goes. And like, he doesn't really have that kind of mistake prone hockey in his offensive game that a lot of offensemen and, and forwards have in the junior leagues. He's just really smart with where it's going to go. And I think that's going to take him really far. Yeah. I mean, coaches like it when you know exactly what you're going to do, right? You're not, (laughs) you don't have the Ryan Merkley effect of like, I'm going to do something really awesome. And then I'm going to do something where you're just like shaking your head within the next like five yeah. seconds of the awesome thing I did. So um, yeah, it sounds like he's going to be one of those guys who earns a coach's trust uh, pretty quickly. And then it's just going to, you know, just because you know exactly what he's going to do every time he has the puck type of, situation. he will, he will make coaches mad with, unless he de- improves his defensive play because coaches, unless they're not nerds. I think they're a bunch of jobs. <laughs> <laughs> they why, love defense wins championships. But. The why will poor uh, this is why I'm not a coach in the NHL. Uh, the defense, <laughs> bunch of jacks. Yeah, a bunch of nerd. Yeah, they a bunch of nerds over there want their yeah. Let's be cool and have more defense. So yeah. um, right. we're going to talk about kind of the Sharks defensive prospect pool a little bit more here in the last segment. But where would he kind of fit? I mean, this. You know, among the pros- all the prospects and stuff, I, I think you have the Eklund as its own tier. Um, whoever they get, mm-hmm. hopefully one Connor Bedard or Fantillier, going to be you know part of that upper upper echelon. Where would uh, where would you kind of slot him in among the Sharks prospects? Um, not just defensemen, but among all of them. So I think Eklund and likely Bedard or Fantilli because I'm a, I'm an optimist. Um, <laughs> so, so they'll be number one, uh, Bedard yeah. or Fantilli. Eklund after that, because he'll probably be in the NHL next year. And he was great in his little debut. I think we had a, we, we disagreed on whether he should come up or not come up, but I think it was, it was great. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were right. He went back down, but, and, and, and they're trying to, and he got injured, but um, uh, anyway, so after them, uh, probably, Probably Bestet would be the third guy. And then if Dragosevic is what I think he is, 
right after VSTAT. So probably fourth. Okay. Um, and that's if, um, like, and that could change to third if, if you know, he takes a big step next year in terms of his development, which honestly, I tell him to just like, keep doing what you're doing, but you really need to focus on these specific areas. And that's what I really like about him is it's not like there's like a nebulous, where does he go from here? There's just really specific areas he needs to get better at. And if with a good coach, tell him that and then work on it. So I did watch a game of his recently, as opposed mm-hmm. to the beginning of the year, because I have, I've watched probably five or six games of his total that, um, I think this one was against Vancouver a couple of days ago and it was a lot better. I mean, it was at least a moderately better. Um, he was a little bit more aggressive and trying to cut off lanes and, and getting the puck off of people. He still didn't, uh, use his body weight effectively on the corners and stuff, but it was a little bit better. It wasn't as bad as it was at the beginning of the year. So I think there's room for improvement. Yeah. And if, you know, if assuming the Barracuda staff kind of stays the same, you're going to have WHL coaches former WHL coaches who are going to be his positional coach. Yeah. You know, we know John McCarthy is, is kind of his developmental path and stuff. So I think he would be in good hands if he got uh, drafted by the Sharks. And then um, Muka probably right below his tier in terms of upside. But I think Muka mm-hmm. probably has a, a safer floor at this point just because he's pretty decent. And he's already been playing in the men's league for like three years. So I think there's a safer floor with Muga Madulin that uh, Dragoseva could not hit if he just, you know, falls on his face next year. Yeah, I mean, he definitely does feel a little bit like a swing, oh, kind of a bigger swing. But again, I think when you're picking 28, 29, somewhere in the back half, uh, the very, very end of the first round, a guy like this where, again, five years from now, we could be just like the John Carlson. Um, how did this guy type of slip? And then if you pair that with... Bedard, Fantilli, you've got yourselves making of a very, very nice uh, rebuild here going this, forwards. <laughs> this de- this defensive class isn't like doesn't have that kind of like star studded thing that um, I'm sure you've heard this a bunch of times from people who come on. It doesn't yeah. feel like it has that star studded defenseman that's going to like knock your socks off. But maybe one of these dudes, including Dragosevic, does in in five years, and then everybody goes, "How did that guy fall to the second round? He was right there." Um, yeah. There's a few of them that are kind of like that. Uh, that have just been kind of hanging around the junior leagues that are everybody's kind of got their favorite one. And I wouldn't say that Dragos Epic is my absolute favorite one, just the most I think has the highest ceiling. And that seems weird to say, because he's projected anywhere from like 20 to 35 or something yeah. or 40. But I think he's got a really, really high ceiling just about getting there. All right, guys, before we start uh, digging about these sharks pro- defensive prospect pool and kind of, the work Mike Greer has done in a short amount of time uh, to kind of reimagine this prospect pool on the fly and add a lot of pieces to it. Um, I still think they're missing that like blue chip defensive prospect, uh, but you have to be excited about kind of where the Sharks, this defensive prospect pool is gone. So uh, before we finish up though, I do need to take a quick break. Talk to you about our old friends at Built Bar. Uh, if you guys don't know by now, Built Bar is a delicious treat, but doesn't have all the fat and calories. Um, each bar is covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. They come in amazing flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond, and only have 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, a whopping 17 grams of protein. And if you're like me and you hate waiting for things to come in the mail, now you can swing out at your local Walmart or Sam's Club and grab a box today. Walmart in the pharmacy section, they have a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate or coconut puffs. Or if you're by a Sam's Club, you can grab a 13-bar box with their hit flavors, brownie, batter, and churro. You'll thank me later. Or if you don't like going out or you want to see a wide variety of selection, check out Built.com. Um, I like the box that has the big variety pack where you can kind of try a bunch of different flavors. One day you're feeling cookies and cream. One day you're feeling churro. Um, or if you don't know which one is your favorite, so make sure you guys check out uh, Built Bars at Walmart, Sam's Club, or Built.com today. All right. Um, so you mentioned Mukum Dulan. You know, we've seen Mike Greer. We're going to kind of talk bigger sharks defensive prospect pool now. So, um, you know, last year, so kind of in the year that, that uh, Mike Greer has been here, right, they, uh, they drafted – uh Havlid, second, you know, second round last year. You got Furlong, uh, you got Michael Fisher, kind of some flyer guys, right? Um, yep. you've also 
sign Henry Thrun out of Harvard after trading from him. You got a uh, Luke Madulin in the devil in the Timo Meyer pick. Like what are your thoughts on, on the way Mike Greer's kind of worked through kind of trying to revamp this blue line, which was kind of, especially after Ryan Merkley was basically the only guy that they had that mm-hmm. was really worth kind of talking about. I think, I think can I, uh, has really had a nice year, but like, yeah, this, this blue line kind of feels like okay, maybe there's something mm-hmm. starting to come together here, right? Yeah, he's he's kind of um, he's interest. It's interesting the way that he's approached adding players to the team. It, it kind of seemed like he was marched in the bottom six for a long time, and then was like like hitting in little pieces of defense. And I think he signaled a change in a lot of how he's um, traded off a lot of the Doug Wilson Jr. and Doug Wilson like. Fan, like fan picks basically like the players that we were like oh this guy's gonna be great and then it was yeah. gone uh such a big list it's like ryan merkley you've got jasper weatherby that's gone uh you got scott reedy uh-huh. that's gone you just have people that like we hung around for years being like are you gonna make the nhl maybe um and then he's just like nah you're gone and so that's one aspect of what i think he's done is just kind of revamped it in his own mind i think it was really smart to go after the the defense of cross pool for the sharks because it was really poor very very bad. bad yeah <laughs> Ryan Merkley was kind of like our last hope and Kanizov or Kanizov and Kanizov were like well Kanizov was found money like he just came out yeah. of nowhere and I still love him he's he's fun he's, he's just a simple effective defenseman that I think is and it's great that he got an extension today uh just a simple effective dude that I think is great that he's still around um Kanizov has had a good year there's still some issues, I think, with his game that need either more time or it may never come around. Mm-hmm. But there is a lot a better game there than there was last year. So that's good that he hung on to him. Um, and then adding Mugamadolin, Thrun, Matias Havilid. I watched a ton of Havilid this year, and and he's fun. <laughs> he's, I he's do smaller. like Havilid a lot, yes. Yeah, yeah, smaller, but he's feisty in the defensive zone. He he's um, he can get lost a little bit like puck wide and uh, losing his man a bit, but offensively he's pretty gifted and he's really got an amazing uh, shot. Like it's going to just drive offense for him. Kind of like maybe Tory Krug or like, I don't know, a couple other ones where it's just, they're just a shooter. That's really good. Um, <laughs> and um, I'm hoping with some more time and um, he's going to come over and like step right into the NHL as like a third pairing guy. You're like, Oh, he can really whip, whip the puck on that. We really should use him. Um, so I think he's an, an important addition and then he's like hanging around. I haven't watched any of Michael Fisher this year cause he was injured and he came back a couple weeks ago, but I still haven't watched him. Um, and then Jake Furlong, I've watched a fair amount of, uh, I like Furlong. He's kind of like Tanner Mullendike light. So if you've watched Mullendike is one of the draft eligible players for this year's draft. Furlong is like him, but light, super aggressive defender. Um, and then decent speed, but then his offense, the mind, me, not amazing. So that's kind of my like head on furlong is that I think there is possibly a, a defender there. It's just not going to be like the, the office. And he was like a six round pick. So, but it was overall a great, great year for sharks uh, prospects, like in terms of how they added so many in such a short period of time. Yeah. I mean, kind of. It's kind of actually amazing what the way they revamped. I mean, yes, I know they lost Timo Meyer, and Timo Meyer is very good at hockey, and having Timo Meyer on your team makes you a better team. <laughs> but you have to be kind of impressed with the short order that you could kind of gone from Ryan Merkley in a bare cupboard to like, okay, like <laughs> there's some guys here. And, you know, I think you're a little bit higher on Muka Madulin than I am. Um, you know, mm-hmm. you've, you watch some of his KHL tape. I basically just what I've seen on the Barracuda. And I know there's a transitional period with him right now of, coming over bigger ice to smaller ice, new teammates, new system, all that stuff. I, I think he's looked shaky at best. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think there, there's some, there's some stuff that's going to iron out. I'm going to give him, you know, you have to give him a, a long leash. I think next year, like have a full off season being over in America, like getting, you know, a full off season for him. I think we'll see him kind of closer to his full potential, but um, let's, let's go Mook Madulan. So what, you, you did a nice little article for San Jose Hockey Now. Uh, hi, Shang. Um, what <laughs> kind of what have what have your thoughts uh, of yeah. Madulin so far? Yeah, I think the thing with Madulin is he's ever since I think he's drafted in 2020, 
he's always been considered a long-term project and it's like he still is around that you're like oh maybe there is more there and i think in general this is like the old adage that defensemen take longer defensemen do take longer defensemen that are like six foot four and skate like he do does um take longer and he from what what I've seen, he's hard defensive like, and he's not, he's the, really the biggest issue I see is his turns and how he skates mostly on a glide and he doesn't, mm -hmm. uh, he's not able to catch up to play by starting and stopping really quickly. That's kind of my biggest issue with him is that he can get burned because it looks like he's half that like looks a little, you know, shaky because someone can burn him basically. Um, but there's a lot there in, in terms of how he passes and, and, his ability to transition and, and his size and also his forward and backward skating is not bad at all. It's pretty good for somebody his size and his ability to mm -hmm. carry the puck is pretty good. So I think it's just going to take a lot more time, more time in the AHL and more careful developing of, uh, and also like a more um, strength on his frame. Cause he's still pretty lanky looking even for someone who's three years out of this draft. Yeah. So he needs definitely a strength coach and he needs a little bit more time and a skating coach to help with his turns and his stops, stops and starts. But there's, there's a lot to like there in terms of things have progressed to the point where he's at least able to affect play offensively. Um, and, and that was evidence in his KHL uh, tape, which is pretty good uh, overall. So it's going to be a few more years for him too. I think he's just, he's got an NHL floor. It's just, he needs to reach too try and get into higher and higher in the lineup. Yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, I would let him go play Barracuda games all next year. I wouldn't even yeah. think about pulling him up at, at any point. Just let him go play. Let him go figure it out over there. Uh, I yeah. think the Barracuda are going to be a much better team next year, especially with year two of Ozzy, year two of Tristan, year two of Gushin. Like, you're going to see this team, I think, be a much more competitive team um, type of, of situation. They hopefully so, we'll lose William Eklund and never see him again. You'll never but. see William Eklund <laughs> in the Barracuda again either. So, um, Keegan, you've said it all. Oh, two questions. So, I always ask the two yeah, the, the, the question. blood questions, right? Um, five years from now, um, which player, hmm. non-Connor Bedard, is the best player in the draft. Matt Vemichkov. That's mm. my, yeah, that's my answer. Um, I, I love Matt Vemichkov and I wrote, uh, I have a top 32 ranking out right now. I've got, I'm coming up with a 64 ranking in the next month or so. Um, I have Mitchkov at three, but it's like a three because of where he lives kind of situation. And because of his contract, I would have him at two. I think he's just really, really good. And the, there's a lot of concerns with his game that I'm sure multiple people have talked to you about. And, um, but when he was with Sochi, I watched like every game of his almost, I think at this point. And man, I haven't seen somebody play in the KHL like that and just be, well, how old he is, 17, 18, and just dominate. And I'm like, this kid's, a, this kid's an NHL or like now, <laughs> like you could put him in and he would probably score 50 points next year. And that's rare for a draft eligible prospect. And it doesn't sound like the most flashy or the most amazing thing, but I think that with a couple of years and once he gets done with his uh, KHL contract, he's going to come over and just kill it. He reminds me of Patrick Kane. And I think he's, I think he's going to hit that ceiling. Uh, yeah. I think it's going to be Kirill Kaprizov where he just walks yeah. in day one and he's a 2.0 type of thing where he just walks in and he's a star and then that's it. So, yeah. and then the final question, where does Dragovic get taken? Hmm. You gotta take where's, pick, where's pick? Nashville picking? I feel like Nashville always picks like a super good defenseman, and then we're like, damn, they had to get that guy. They are I think they're let's pull up Tekathon right now. They're gonna fighting for a playoff spot here. Um and they don't maybe. have uh so yeah, they're fighting for a playoff spot right now. I think if the playoffs ended today, uh they are 16th right now, which Oof, that's too high. I'm going to go with like 22nd. I think that a team will take a swing on him because actually that would be Nashville. Sorry. Nashville has the Edmonton pick. I missed that. So there you go. Look at that. Cool. So with whoever Edmonton's pick is, that's yes. it. <laughs> um, I, I just, pick. there's not a lot of defensemen here and then NHL GMs just fall in love with defensemen that are really big. So that it already adds for a drag of um, And I think he's just going to get taken higher just because of the lack of defensemen. You've, you've got 
your Reinbacher, Simashev, who will probably go later than a lot of people think. He's like, he's like an internet darling, and I, I love Simashev for a lot of reasons, but I think he's going to go later for his Russian factor more than anything else. And then Guliayev, same thing. And ASP is probably going to go top 15. So it's like those four dudes and then 10 junior defenders that are really good. And I think <laughs> Dragosevic is going to be one of the higher ones. And, you know, Nashville, could have, they're just good at picking defensemen. They just—they will. They just crank them out. Them and uh, Remember this. If, if they get him, you'll be like, man, Keegan was right. right. <laughs> Where can the people find you, buddy? Um, so I am on Twitter at halfwall underscore hockey. And then to make things confusing, Using my website is half dash wall hockey.com. Um, the brand, we got the brand there. I, just, <laughs> I know it just put the dash, and I really wanted the dash. It's, it's a mess right now. Um, but yeah, you can find me at those two places. I'll be having a top 64 ranking in the next month or so. Uh, a couple more articles out for SJ Hockey now, and um, a final before the draft is going to be my um, like top 15 charts prospects. Awesome. Um, thanks, buddy. Until next time. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, my conversation with Keegan. Make sure you guys are following Half Wall Hockey on Twitter. Um, yeah, uh, Dragicevich, Dragovich, he seems really, really intriguing. Uh, and I think the Sharks, if he's there for the Sharks at 28 or wherever the Sharks are picking with that uh, Devil's Pick, you're going to have to think long and hard about him because I think he can be that kind of Eric Carlson lights that offensive defenseman that the Sharks blue line really is going to need. Um, you know, I know Luke Madulin's got some kind of toolsies and stuff, toolsy prospect and has some pieces. Um, but I think again, just continually to add to this blue line, uh, really try to revamp and remake this blue line here that has really needed, needed some love. And I think Mike Chris done a good job with that so far in a short amount of time. Um, but I think adding a guy like, like Jack Isovich could really be that crown jewel where you're like, okay, this, this is now we got something here. We're, we're cooking with gas on the blue lines. So um, we'll be back tomorrow. Talk about the abs game uh, as we get to play the abs twice this week. So that'll be fun. Uh, so make sure you guys are following along. You can follow me on Twitter at my fry hole, follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at locked on sharks. Um, you guys can also make sure you're following the show wherever you get podcasts or you can watch on YouTube as well. Uh, that way you guys know when the newest episode is available. So uh, until tomorrow, bye friends.